Okay. Okay. I I can do that too if needed. No, oh, it no, went I'm blank. Totally You're good. Okay. Okay, I think I hear you better now. Better? Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So, how's your day going? My day is going pretty well, pretty good. I just had a um like a group like a networking session that I joined recently, so that was productive, but how are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm just doing some client work and working on, I developed a new quiz today. Um, sorry, I'm getting some really bad echo here. Okay, let me put my headphones in too. I can put mine in. Okay, see if that'll help. Yeah, give me one second. I need sorry, to go grab them. <laughs> We're newbies to this, clearly. Yeah, I've never done like a a live like where I've joined someone else's live before so this is new for me too yeah I did it with Jill Hicks um okay last week I think okay. but mine like froze up but it oh, still works like I think you could still hear us but oh it happens oh shoot yeah. where's my little adapter thing oh you know what I cannot find that's okay my Let little dongle but anyway We'll do the best we can, I guess. <laughs> yes. Okay. Can you can you hear me out? Maybe if I hold it, is that a little better? Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So yeah, just doing client work. I developed a new fitness nutrition score quiz that is the link in my bio, and it's just a really fun like eight question quiz that goes through different aspects of nutrition, and it gives you a score at the end that just tells you kind of how do you stack up. Right. Yeah. What it looks like, does, you know, were you given any specific nutrition advice? Were there a bunch of like food rules? Kind of how did that look like for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So looking back, I think the earliest I, I guess, got like any guidance from anyone was I was either, I think, 12 or 13. Like I was pretty young, like f freshly turned teenager, I guess. Yeah. And um, so he was like a licensed nutritionist. Um, so that's who I first talked to. And really, I think that started like, I think my parents actually like that. It stemmed from them wanting me to talk to someone just to get um, more of that education. And yeah, like, in, of course, like during that time, like that's kind of when like your body starts to change, like you go through those kinds of developments. And I did, of course, like I put on some weight and you know, that's where that started. So that was like yeah. in like the club days. Like normal weight gain that was just accompanying puberty. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how did did you feel like the was it a, like a dietitian like a registered dietitian? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was a doctor. So he had um, he has a PhD, and I th I don't remember like what the letter the other letters after his sure. name were, but. Yeah, it to me from what I remember, like I remember he had like these like models of like how much a serving of each type of food was. So like for me, like now that's pretty like common knowledge. I think like a deck of cards was the amount of protein you have like for a meal, like at every meal. Um, so it it seemed like nothing really I think out of the ordinary. It was just good to like get some extra knowledge from someone who wasn't like. He didn't specifically work, like, in gymnastics or, like, with any certain sport. Like, he works with anyone and everyone. That's awesome. Yeah, I really encourage, you know, working with kind of a, a neutral third party because, you know, even though a lot of parents and coaches have some good nutrition education and advice, it's just often 
not taken or received well yeah um, by the athlete cool so then how did that change for you that's kind of in the elite scene and then as you transition to college just what does your nutrition look like yeah yeah, that's a good question. Um, so I had I had seen that guy when like in club like during my younger years, and then I didn't I didn't see him very often. Just a couple times, I think, just to get a basic um, knowledge. And yeah. then by the time I had gotten into University of Michigan, um, that was where like a whole new world, I guess, opened up for me. So we had access to like a, like registered dietitians and doctors and like you name it. University of Michigan had it. So I was very like spoiled. I was very lucky to be around like a whole bunch of professional people um, in in all aspects of my life. So not just education, but like, you know, physical training and coaching and everything. So um, I did have a nutritionist in college and access to like free like snacks and food and things like that. And um, like I said, I think just overall, I was very spoiled. Like, I had so much available to me where it was almost overwhelming. Um, so the difficult aspect of all that was, like, making the right choices. Because you have all this breadth of information, it's making the right choices, really. Sure, sure. So how, you know, with your experience with just, like, your body and nutrition and just that transition from probably working out way more hours in club mm-hmm. to... Mm-hmm. Dad aren't cooking, you're making your own choices. Like you said, there's pretty much unlimited food. So what was that like for you? Yeah. Um, honestly, I had a really hard time um like throughout my career, I wouldn't say there was ever one moment where I can think back to and go like, Oh, yep, that was the moment where it like really was difficult for me. Just kind of ever since I went elite, I I was elite at thirteen years old. So that journey of like going through you know, developing physically just on top of like all the gymnastics stuff, like just being a normal girl, that was hard because I tended to be a little bit bigger than the rest of my teammates. Um, And, you know, as injuries came along the way, that also kind of held me back too. like I tended to, you know, put on a little bit of weight after I got hurt. Um, And then going from club to college, that was another time where, yeah, like I put on a little bit of weight. Um, but I never got to the point where, like, I couldn't perform normally. So that was the other, like, confusing part to me. Like, I, st- I think I managed it pretty well. But, um, and I had, a, like, a strong interest in keeping up with my nutrition, too. Like, I cooked a lot for myself. And, I mean, I preferred that, actually, as opposed to, like, going out to eat. So um, I feel like I did okay. I think I handled it pretty well. It was more of, like, a mental shift for me yeah. than physical, actually. Yeah, a little bit. Again, that in college was where I probably got the the breadth of that knowledge. Actually, um, I mean, of course, go. I went to public school until I was in fourth grade, so I got like maybe a little bit as a kid. But like, then I went to a private school where it was like I learned in a very different way compared to like and in a very short amount of time, um, in in that setting. But. I'm trying to think. Yeah, like, I think the the most knowledge that I got in terms of, like, bo- how body compo- composition is different uh, was in college, and we did, like, the, like, the pinch test, like, yeah. you know, those kinds of scales. We talked about that. We did a lot of that. Um, we did not have any of, like, the bod pods, I think they're called. Like, we didn't have that fancy of equipment, but we relied a lot on, like, the, like, the basic um, testing, I guess, in terms of, like, scales and, like, pinch test and stuff like that. Sure. Yeah. What did that look like? I mean, was that something they did kind of like pre postseason and just kind of tracked it? Did they yep. talk to your coaches about it? Did they talk to you individually? Like how was that changing? Because that's something that I think is just a really sensitive subject that um, you know, even in the collegiate setting, like yeah, you're adults, but it's really easy to kind of handle with care and effort to not really just 
spark some disordered patterns. Yeah, and I will say, like, is is wonderful. Like, I don't mean this in a negative way. If anyone from, like, my Michigan career is ever watching this, like, I don't want to, like, discla- I want to disclaim they were, like, they did what they had to do and they did it out of care for us. But I did have a hard time, like, it, and it was more, like, not as it was happening. It was, like, after we did, like, the pinch test and that kind of stuff. It was just walking out of that and feeling, like, oh, I just didn't enjoy that, like, this is what they, like, why are they tracking me, like, I'm still doing all my skills just fine, um, you know, and I, like I said, I love Caroline, if she's, if, you know, she's a wonderful nutritionist, she was, I, she gave me wonderful advice, like, in college, and I love her to death, um, and I know that's just part of her job, but I, yeah, I had a hard time, like, with how often we, we did that stuff, and, um, but it was for a good purpose and a good reason, you know? So, like, I respect it. Sure. But, I mean, I think that's something important to bring up and, like, not to be controversial here, but mm-hmm. I mean, disordered eating and then true, like, clinical and definition eating disorders are so rampant in the sport that, you know, I think that's the hard part with sports dietitians in the collegiate setting is, you know, doing the body fat testing of a football player is very different than a gymnast. And, you know, I think there's sometimes just a lack of disconnect in terms of, you know, how are we going to use this information and do the benefits of this information outweigh the potential negative cost Mm -hmm. that's going to be to the athlete. And like you said, I mean, your, your skills were there, you were healthy, like you were doing well, you were thriving. So it's like, do we need that information? And like, as a medical professional, you know, yeah, when you see me in the clinic, I'm going to weigh your child. I'm going to see their height. I'm going to track it on the growth chart because I want to make sure that things are where they should be. Right. And so in the collegiate setting, yeah, like pre, post, season, and off-season body composition testing to, you know, help the strength coaches see how their programming is, how your bodies are developing, to, to spot in. Oh, whoops. Oh, sorry. Paused. It's all right. Uh, you know, look for red flags. Thank you. 
to having to then progress back to where you were. And the thing is, even if your body does change a little bit, say you put on five pounds, by the time you do the conditioning to get back to where you were, you're gonna be fine. Yeah, you're gonna be fine. Yeah. Right. We're all, everyone's going to be out of shape. Hopefully people have stretched and, you know, done the conditioning they could at home. Uh, But I will say, like, during this period is super important and a huge blessing, I think, for a lot of athletes to recover. Absolutely. I would say for a lot of elite athletes and in the collegiate hopeful athletes, this is probably the first time in their career where they're actually getting to rest and recover. Yeah. So even though it may take some time to get back to the gym and, you know, their body has to get back in shape and whatever else, I would venture to say they're going to come back a lot stronger if mm-hmm. they can help kind of ride this out. Yeah. Instead, what unfortunately a lot of my athletes are dealing right now, what they're dealing with is just that freak out moment of, oh my gosh, I'm not training four hours, I'm sitting at home all day, so I'm just not eating anything because mm. I just, I don't want to change, I don't want to gain weight, I don't want to feel softer. You know, I think gymnasts are just overly attuned to their bodies. Yeah. And the changes that we notice, and even, I mean, I'm, shoot, I'm 10 years retired, um, didn't get near to the level that you did of gymnastics, but, you know, even 10 years later, like, I am very conscious of my body, and that's just something I have to put aside and recognize, like, okay, this is a feeling, but no one else cares. Right. And it has no relevance to my day or my, you know, physical fitness or whatever is going to be on, but, yeah, I just, thanks for sharing that. I think that's yeah. Mm-hmm. And maybe they do a good job with that during JO. Like maybe they don't have a lot of injury, like whatever. But I think the like simple transition to college and training less is a big one. Yeah. For sure. And I think what I always encourage my athletes is, you know, when you have a foundation of solid meals, snacks where needed, and you're fueling your performance, we can peel back those added performance snacks, you know, pre-workout, intro workout, recovery, etc. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, looking back and I feel like I, my mind changes about this every, every once in a while, but I do think looking back, I had a harder time with my body image, like my own self, self concept. I had a harder time like in college and in club gymnastics as opposed to now, because it took me, I actually think it took me all those years and those experiences to get to a place where I learned to like, value how like how not only how I looked but like how I feel on the inside too with like injuries and all these physical changes like it took me all those years to like realize that um like I'm okay like I'm fine just the way I am and it's not even just fine it's like I'm great the way I am um but in terms of like sorry if you hear my dog dogs barking I hear them really loudly um Um, but like in terms of diet, like I said, I've always had a passion for like at least cooking on my own and finding healthy recipes and new recipes and trying new things so that I'm glad that that's like stuck with me because it's like forced me to, I mean, I guess forced in a good way to like stay in, in a positive mindset and like an open mind to good, healthy, different foods. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, I had, I had like a stream of consciousness and then I kind of lost it, but, um, 
my brain lately. Um, oh, so, like, I guess one thing that, like, has really kept me also, like, in that same, in terms of, like, recipes and stuff, I, I like to watch YouTube, and so, like, going on YouTube and finding videos of, like, different ways to cook, like, eggs or, like, flour, like, basic ingredients has been, like, really good and really helpful for me. Oh, the other thing I was gonna say that, um, also kind of, like, forced me to be really in tune with, not only how I've, like, had to transition from, like, gym college gymnastics to now, um, but, like, just keeping myself, like, healthy in general was, um, my senior year at Michigan, I actually had a, like, I guess you could say a career-ending injury, um, so I hurt my back, like, end of January, early February, like, really early on in season, um, and at the time, we weren't sure, like, if it was career-ending or not, it just ended up taking, like, like, I, it just ended up taking me out. So, um, I went from, like, a hundred, like, I'm competing one weekend and then within a week, I went to zero. I, like, couldn't walk like a normal person, couldn't run, do anything. And, like, at the time, I was still in the, at least in the mindset of, like, I need to get back in the gym and I need to, like, stay on top of this and still eat healthy, but I was not, like, physically able to. Um, so I was, like, really in tune during that time with, like, what I was doing, trying to get back, but after, like, time went on, I mean, of course, by the time season ended, I was like, okay, that's just the way it was meant to be, like, I cannot do the sport anymore, and that's, like, fine, um, and so, although, I guess, like, some more backstory, because my, like, college experience was a little different compared to how, like, the normal student athlete goes, so I graduated high school a semester early, so I started in January, like, right away, like, with the team, like, like, January 2013, all the way until, um, like, April or May of 2016, and so I still had an entire semester after that season in school, so for me, it was, like, that was actually a saving grace for me, because I was still in, like, a very, very much of a routine, even with, like, that summer, even though I wasn't doing gymnastics, I was still, like, forced to be a student, and, like, Yeah. yeah, 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 so for me, and I know not everyone, like, has that, but that ended up, while my career didn't end the way I wanted it to, it ended up being, like, really perfect for me to transition to, like, life without gymnastics, and since then, I, I really am thankful, actually, that that happened that way. Yeah, that's good, yeah, that's kind of like, I started to retire, like, fall of my senior year, mm -hmm. um, like, October in, in high school, so that gave Like, okay. I lost that, like, the second semester, but I still kind of found that new normal of, like, go to the health club and do, a, you know, cycle class and stretch. And yeah. Kind of, you know, knowing that my strength and my skills and things were going to deteriorate to some degree over time. And I think that's hard for a lot of athletes, you know. Yeah. This is your life. It's your identity. Um, and and your, your body, unfortunately, is, is such a kind of beacon of that. And so... Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. But it's our society today. It's just it's so image focused that it's very easy as a young teenager to kind of associate those two things of, you know, if I look like this, I'm good. And if I don't look like this, then black and white, it's just it's all bad. Yeah. And it's so. funny because I actually ended up losing weight after all of the, after my injury too, instead of gaining weight. Like the exact opposite of what I thought. And so I'm actually lighter now than I was when I was a gymnast because I'm, I'm like built like just strong. I don't know what, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, whatever, like, parents were too controlling with food, like, whatever. 
Oh yeah. Now they're adults and they're like now they're at the point where they're just unhealthy. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's really sad. I mean, I, I like, I relate to a lot of those feelings too. Like I, I was never diagnosed with anything. Like, I don't think I, I mean, I don't know. Like I'm sure everyone could probably look back and think, Oh, maybe like I, well, I did have a problem. I don't know. But I, I mean, it's just a learning experience for me more than anything. I think at this point and you know, and it's taking me again, like it's taking me a long time to like come to terms with that. So um, you know, if anything, it's kept me more aware, but in a, in a healthier way and not to an obsessive degree. Like I've learned that being obsessive about it is like so toxic and not helpful. <laughs> like who would have thought, <laughs> but, but yeah, like I'm sure there, there are plenty of, you know, retired athletes out there that are just still struggling with that. And I feel, I feel for them. Mm-hmm. Um, but definitely, like, kind of inner respite starting some tendencies, and then at some point, like, you're tired of that, so you kind of shift to the kind of binge or sprint cycle, and I think that's where a lot of athletes are, are stuck, and, yeah. like, you know, I'm very vocal on my Instagram, and I think people think, like, I hate clean eating, which I hate it from the sense of, like, the food rules and kind of the morality that's placed around food, but all that yeah. Mm -hmm. time like I'm gonna put cheese on my pasta like I'm gonna enjoy chocolate like I'm gonna have some chips with lunch like yeah it's those little things that help us to enjoy the lean proteins and the fruits and veggies and the whole grains that like we know we all should be eating um but like you don't have to be you don't have to eat like a bodybuilder like I you know I think we've all probably dabbled in that like I think it's a very natural progression for gymnasts to kind of then shift to like the bodybuilding Mm -hmm. kind of this like excuse to remain like hyper focused on your nutrition mm -hmm. like, sure for those who want to be like a figure competitor or like whatever like yep you do that like that's your goal yeah but I think we can all agree at the end of the day like that level of obsessive food focus is just not it's not healthy like it, it detracts from your ability to be present it, it detracts from your ability to maintain relationships like I know for me like I just got married um this past fall Oh, congratulations. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Um, but even, like, dating. And, like, when we were, like, dating and got engaged, like, my relationship with food took this, like, further level than it had been at in terms of, like, food freedom because I would watch him, yep. who was very much an intuitive eater. You know, he was super athletic, played every sport, like, was going to do college soccer, but ended up, like, getting a full ride with the Air Force to study engineering, um, but, yeah, just watching him, like, eat foods and eat vegetables, and, you know, he had torn his ACL, and he had put some weight on, but it was, like, naturally coming off after he was able to be more active, and, um, you know, I think as a dietitian, like, when you are in a relationship, or just, I mean, obviously, this is so down the road for all the gymnasts, but at the same time, like, thinking about one day wanting to be a mom, and, you know, as I was trained in pediatrics and trained in child feeding, you know, a lot of the parents own what we call feeding competency and how they can feed themselves and regulate food mm -hmm. has a lot to do with how their children respond. Mm -hmm. And, you know, unfortunately, I saw several, you know, kids and families with some major obesity problems where the mom was actually really struggling with, like, restrictive eating disorder behaviors. And that translated from a parenting sense to just too much restriction so these kids were just going crazy whenever they could kind of you know get access to food so mm -hmm. you know I think obviously the adolescent brain can't really think forward in terms of you know what are my nutrition habits like what are my fitness habits like are these sustainable but I think as they get older like they can start to grasp the concepts of that and it's like I tell clients you know whenever you make a choice 
know, not eat the snack even when you're hungry or not eat the cookie even when you want it. Like, what is going to be the compensatory behavior down the road? Yeah. Like, are you in a mindset where, like, sure, yeah, I don't really want the cookie right now. Like, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Or are you going to be, like, digging in the pantry later and snacking on all these things where, not to focus on calories, but technically speaking, now you've consumed, like, 800 extra calories when you could have just eaten the cookie and move on. Right. Yeah, and I ha- I struggled with that, man. Oh my gosh, that brings me back to like, yeah. I ended up struggling more when I was told that I couldn't eat something. Yes. Like I responded so much better, like knowing what I could eat. You know, yeah. like I yeah, the idea of restriction to like an obsessive degree just like totally did me in. Like it was the worst thing. Yeah, and I think I mean that's just like as you know, like as a mission coach now and training psychology, I mean that's just human nature. Yeah. And, yeah. Know, yeah. Yeah. It's no different for us as adults. Like, it's no different for collegiate athletes. It's no different for club athletes. Um, yeah, I just, and I think you get to the point where I just rebel against all restriction at this point. Like, same. I, I just can't. You know, and I look back at my gymnastics days and I'm like, I don't know how I did it. Uh, uh, it. It didn't serve me well, that's for sure. But I think, you know, people keep it up for so long, which is kind of the hard Mm-hmm. The problem is, like, you, you can until you can't. And then when you can't, it's like, that's when people's weight goes out of control, when just everything just completely goes to the opposite end. Yeah. Which can just be a lot of, like, self-harm and kind of negative effects for them. Mm, yeah. So, um, I love it. So, tell me today, because you're a mission coach now, you work with complete performance coaching, tell our few people on here kind of what you're doing and what that looks like. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah, I'm a mental performance coach with complete performance coaching. Um, luckily I work pretty much online for the most part. So like this whole virus thing going on, hasn't been, it hasn't been too terrible. Um, I am still trying to grow my clientele. So that's where it's like kind of taken the hardest hit. But in terms of the people that I've already been talking to, um, I'm, I'm really lucky and I'm really grateful for being able to work with the athletes that I talk to um, during the week. So, um, I do that. Um, I deal a lot with like fear and anxiety. That's been like the biggest like subject or topic that I end up encountering with my clients the most. So, um, lately I've been really focusing on helping athletes get over fear and anxiety in terms of like certain skills or even just competition in general. Um, and now that, you know, the seasons are for the most part, like over, this is actually, like, a really great time, so, like, I love, you know, despite all this, like, the negativity and, like, the uncertainty, this is actually a really, like, great time to work on, like, your diet and nutrition and hydration and your, your, the mental side of your sport, too, so really, like, I'm really choosing to stay positive through all this, because, I mean, we should really be grateful for this time off and, like, more time to focus on ourselves, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and for some, it's just it's just not in the cards. But for those who can, yeah, I mean, like things will come back. Like the economy will come back. Of course. Will come back and gymnastics will come back. And so that's the thing. Is in six months, we're all probably gonna hopefully be back in the gym and kind of back in our normal routines. And yeah. It's like, what did you do at this time that you're literally never, ever, ever in your life going to get again? Right. Like end of story. Like. Yeah. Like, you know, for so many gymnasts, this is life saving in terms of like letting their body heal and recover. It's yes. Too. Yes. And I think that's that's the big kind of variable there. I think for a lot of them, it's time to kind of figure out their nutrition. And mm-hmm. even, you know, if we take a couple steps back and healthy steps forward and body change or whatever, like now is the time to do that. Like, yeah. you're not mid competition season, like you're not peaked right now. Yeah, the pressure's off. like I made investments in my business 
choice as I've you know transitioned from clinic work and working for someone to now working for myself. So I've made these financial investments that I might not have 100 percent of it now, but I'm going to get a return on investment. Yeah. You know, fivefold later, where it's like you know I can choose to invest that now, or I can just be like super tight and cheap and be like, mm, no, I'm not going to spend it, and my growth is just going to be marginal. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, long term. Yeah, yeah, I think it's hard for all of us. It's hard for young athletes. But cool. Well, this has been super fun. Any questions that you have? Anything you want to hear? Oh my gosh. You know, I guess if I had to like say anything, like end on a final note, um, it would be like, like I said, like I had a wonderful experience like everything and even through the not wonderful times like whether that was with diet or like my self-image or just anything in terms of my gymnastics career it was all for a good reason and I ended up coming out just fine and so like if you're a young athlete watching this like you're gonna be fine yeah. <laughs> this this is a very unique strange time but like you're going to look back on this and hopefully like the choices you make now are either going to push you forward. Um, hopefully you're making those good choices, um, or they're not. So like, just be mindful of that. And you know, this is, it's a, it's a positive time as well. So that's what I, that's what I'd want to (laughs) say, I guess. from years of wisdom and just elite gymnastics and really I mean you were at the echelon where so many girls want to be thousands of girls and it's like either you're doing it or you're not and a lot of these like mindset shifts that you've just talked about are really what's gonna kind of make or break an athlete yeah oh thank you yeah I mean that's my goal it's just like knowing everything's gonna be okay no matter what happens or what you do like everything's gonna be fine and it's gonna be more than fine it's gonna be great that's really what I should say it's gonna be great like however it ends up is how it's supposed to end up yeah and your body's healthy like a lot of us even though there's a lot of anxiety right now you know about our bodies and things changing or whatever like we also could be in the hospital on a ventilator right now so it's like yeah perspective that really helps to put into perspective like life is so precious mm-hmm. and there is life beyond the sport even though yes Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. I agree. Well, thanks, Riley. We'll for sure do this again, and I'll try to find a way to get this to replay for people. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'd love that. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate your time and energy. You're just like, you're an angel. I had a great time. Well, well thanks. Well, I'll, I'll keep, you know, putting out, maybe we'll do this, like, weekly for the next couple weeks. We'll just have, like, a Riley, Christina kind of body image, nutrition kind of That'd be great. Yay. Okay. All right. Bye. All right. Bye.